Hello my friends and welcome to Aswan in Egypt, Upper Egypt, to the very south the very south of the country So, that's it friends, we have arrived Well, this will be a, one cool place, I think. And yes, if you're interested to see what's going on here and what will happen next, feel free to come along with me in my explorations in this city. What is that? Just stairs to go down? That's crazy. <laughs> okay. Look what buildings they have near the railway station. That's a proper Egyptian architecture style, what do you think? Cool. So, I just came out of Luxor train station. No, not Luxor, Aswan. <laughs> and... Yeah just now i came out <laughs> there was a small traffic jam so that is the train station as itself which shouldn't be allowed to be filmed probably and that is a swan market am i pointing the right direction hopefully and yes friends now i will be walking towards my hostel but as I have unfinished obelisk, one object which everybody is writing about just on my way, so I'll see that on my way but other than that I want to get quicker to my hostel because I have a few things a bit urgent which I have to do for my business but don't worry, in later days we'll explore and we'll see more. And for you it will be all in the same video, so... No hassle for you, my friends. Yeah, it feels good to be here. While I was in Oman, and with all the mishaps with Pakistan, which probably you saw in my previous videos, if not, Feel free to check them out about what happened in Pakistan, how I got thrown out of the country <laughs> and sent back to Oman. But yeah, after all that, I was longing to be in some safer, cheaper, affordable place where I can repair my cash flows. And finally, I'm here. So it does feel very good. Indeed, indeed. It does feel very good. And all the... Yeah, these fruit already are a lot better than the ones which I saw in Oman. So it will be not just cheaper but tastier and healthier as well. Life is good, my friends. Isn't it? <laughs> I just came out of Souk, of the market, which I was walking through all the distance from the train station. And look at this, my friends! It is River Nile and a nice fleet of Nile sailing boats. These are the spritz in English. The mast is the smaller piece. Uh, I need more hands. So, the mast is that piece which is uh, fastened into a boat. But this thing, it's not a boom. But I think it's called sprit in English, but I'm not sure. They are so tall, actually. But yeah, I can understand. You need to catch the winds over those mountains to be able to... Um, what was it in English now again? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> when you go against wind into zigzag motion, 
and there's one sailing there that's a cool thing I'd love to sail for a few days up or down the river with this thing one day but that would probably be a quite expensive thing and probably they do it only like a small day sailing I don't see any living quarters down below of these boats so they're just like a day, day sailors and you see there are two more amazing oh one of them is getting underway just now one man just came to me and said welcome one hour on a boat and i said he might have no money he said oh it's free no money I smiled and laughed and I said, I know, it's never free. <laughs> Why should it be? And then he said, not big money. <laughs> so that free was not big money. But whatever that would be, it's not for me in this situation. Maybe if it really isn't expensive, then after I have saved some money, by living in Egypt for for a few weeks maybe then I might think about it yeah they're way underway now oh that's cool I like it they're quite authentic very little touristy stuff added but basically very authentic boats which is definitely nice I wonder what kind of keels they have or probably center boards not keels even it looks like there might be a center board case in the middle of it anyway let's not get too much into details and let's walk our way towards there where my hostel is some 40 minutes walk still ahead I have walked something like 20 minutes now so it's still a good distance away well here is one beautiful mosque <coughs> but I have been indulging in something else very pleasurable <laughs> uh, in that souk I found quite ripe maybe not ideal but close to ideal uh, guavas you see I got one and a half kilos of that and now I'm just eating 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 <laughs> I'm so happy to be back in Egypt where the fruits are ripe and good instead of those parodies of fruits which we can buy in Europe and even in those Gulf states which I were in they were not as good they were almost as bad as European versions of unripe fruit now, this is beautiful I definitely need to go there one day and I will I think I'll spend some time in this city but not now now I have things to do let's keep walking towards south where our hostel is you see even these bananas they're far from good but they're better than the ones which I saw in Oman and even worse in Emirates why is it so that the richer the country the worse the fruits in there they're paying attention to like they want the fruits to look equal big shiny bright but they don't care about how they taste like if you buy fruits to look at them i can understand yes then all the european understanding of what's quality for fruit then it works 
if you just want to look at them keep it on the table and never eat but if you want to eat I care about how they taste and also how nutrient and enzyme and vitamin rich they are which is pretty much exactly the same thing as how they taste with fruits it's very easy we people are made to be eating fruits mostly if not only <laughs> and therefore when it comes to fruits we can trust our uh, what do you call it senses whatever smells good and tastes good is good for our health and for everything with fruits it works and however much you want to eat it will be good quantity to be eaten for your weight for fruit it works it doesn't work with other things like meat for example or bread there what is tasty most often isn't healthy and what is healthier isn't tasty <laughs> and the right amounts are not right amounts uh, you eat enough to feel good but then you get obese because those meat and bread foods are more nutrient dense <clears throat> more calories inside than it's meant to be for our bellies and because of that when you eat meat and bread as much as you want you get fat because you get too many calories which you wouldn't get if you would eat uh, the same amount of fruits the same kilogram of fruit if you would eat you wouldn't get fat you would be all right and perfect you could never get that problem if you eat fruits mostly or only because then you can trust your senses if it feels that it was enough, it, then it was enough. If it feels you want more, it means you need more. If it feels it's tasty, uh, it means that it is ripe and good and exactly what you need. If it feels it's, it doesn't taste and smell good, then it means that it's not the best for your body. It's very simple. But it works with fruit, not with other things. Well, not with most things. Anyway, it was a bit long detour while showing you the city. I'll get back to my job, <laughs> which I started but didn't finish while talking. See you later, my friends. Haha. <laughs> This is some proper dangerous load. A donkey in central roundabout with how many gas cylinders? <laughs> That's a cool thing. I like it, I like it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And look at this uh, bike, motorcycle the whole family on it and it works why shouldn't it yeah and this is how the tuk-tuk gets clean will be nice and bright for the tourists Somewhere here should be the unfinished obelisk, which I understand is a, a big historical thing, which was built very, very... Ah, the donkeys can run as well. Usually they walk slowly, but these kids are pushing it. And they have a lot of donkeys, a lot of, lot of donkeys. Few horses, few camels, but lots of donkeys.
in in this setting in agriculture probably donkeys are the easiest animal probably yeah but it looks like we won't be seeing much if anything let's see from there because I understand that this obelisk was built very very long ago and it would be something really huge it uh, was planned to be carved out from the bedrock and if it would be finished it would be very big I was hoping that I'd be able to see it from outside but looks like it's nothing well let's continue then we are going that way to Kostal well here is a fence and theoretically I should be able to see something more but I don't see anything more would it be deep underground there or what maybe maybe it was planned to be carved a big pit in which the obelisk would be yep but in any case we are not going to get there maybe some other time i wonder why that police car was beeping on me but no they're not running after me so i'm okay friends this car reminds me of Olga very much but not exactly of course aren't these donkeys cute well this is how it looks when they build something petrol powered mixer or even diesel that's an interesting cemetery here these are cute is it called adobe adobe in english the mud brick which is which isn't uh, cooked in the stove and which is mixed with straw to be stronger it's not so brittle but maybe it's not mixed with straw it was just on that wall But they're definitely cool. Would you build yourself such a house for the time when you are dead? I somehow have a feeling, <laughs> well, more than that, <laughs> that after we are dead, we wouldn't care so much about where our body is put would you care it's more for those who stay here for them to cope with the loss not for those who die that guy was actually mixing cement with water and sand there so he's building something well it is actually very pleasantly proportional Ma fiche mouche que là. Ah, c'est ok.
Okay, thank you. I was saying him it's no problem because he was stopping he's working there obviously and he was stopping because he saw I was filming and I felt no need to stop you can pass I don't want to interrupt your work with my fooling around here but instead of just carrying on he said can I help you nice people here as everywhere in Egypt I wonder what are these pots for could it be that it doesn't look like there was fire made under them could it be just drinking water I don't know let's keep going towards our hostel so friends you sometimes ask me to show the hotel and hostel and situation here I can show you my hostel I have it here in Aswan for 4 euros a night and that's a room of 4 beds mine is over there that's my pocket belt there I have a charging spot there, small lamp and for this room is separately this thing so this is what you get for four euros per night in Aswan in Upper Egypt and also yeah I'll show you probably the backyard and the common room So that is the area and this is how the hostel looks from outside and there they said should be a gate probably it is this one where I should be able to get in with this key yes okay this is how it looks not bad a place where you can sit outside what is that, a hot tub? oh no, it's just water storage or something so, that's a place if you, can, you, if you want to hang out outside have a meal, something you can have it here quite beautiful Hello. Mm -hmm. So that was my short tour about my hostel. Just because you asked in the comments. <laughs> and uh, yeah, only thing is you can write in the comments and ask me questions and whenever it feels like a good idea to answer them I'll try to answer only thing is please keep in mind that it takes one to two months for me to edit these videos so if you ask something today and if I reply tomorrow it will be after one or two months when I get to edit them and upload and only then you will get the reply in that video so it won't be the next day unless i make some short video which i can upload immediately without editing <laughs> Well, 
شكرا So I went here to eat and this is what I got, a big portion of chicken with rice for 1 euro 74 cents, not bad. You don't need to be too old to drive, do you? How can you not like this architecture with these kind of roofs? Cool. Yeah, I didn't explain it to you, but I'm just having a walk. Uh, in these days, I have quite a lot of work but I just have some walk around some local streets in Aswan and it's quite cool, what do you think? I will not be going anywhere, anywhere further you see these routes? this is cool I won't be going anywhere further not even to that dock where the ferries go to that island over there. I won't be going even there because I don't have too much time. But I just wanted <coughs> to have a walk for an hour in the midday when it's sun sunny and warm and nice. And it is nice, isn't it? Wow, look at these. These. I like them. You can see how it looked inside. Marhaba. Yeah, I'm filming you. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> now we are back on the big street in Aswan. This is probably what most tourists see who don't go into the smaller of the beaten path street. But I can't keep myself off from going in there. <laughs> I want to see all those places which most people don't see as well. For some reason they like this model of Peugeot. There are loads and loads of exactly this model cars around which I haven't seen almost anywhere in the world other than here and these are already different areas of living uh, how do you call it? blocks where people live What I learned today doesn't make yesterday wrong. That's a good thought. Al Salam Academy. Peace Academy. Nice name. <laughs> and look at that. That mosque is something quite unique. I don't think it's very old. It doesn't look like very old. But look at that architecture. It's something quite unique. And are those in the corners meant to be pencils? Is it something related to this education? Or am I just seeing it? So this is a couple days later, I'm again, I'm continuing to work quite a lot, but I'm again outside in the midday for an hour or so, just to have some little walk around, see some little bit, get some food, stretch my feet. And I wonder, who is this man? Anybody has any idea? He looks quite Egyptianish face. I mean these times, not the old Egyptian times. And some mosque there. They have very many mosques. Around every second corner, you get some mosque. And they're saying, yes, yes, of course. <laughs> this is crazy. They really intended to have a fountain here. Well, maybe because they don't have any shortage of water because of the Nile, which is there. Yeah, 
I still can't get my head around it. <laughs> Mid desert, but no shortage of water. <laughs> Amazing. They have a lot of old Fiat cars and a lot of old Peugeot cars. And those are the two makes which they prefer, obviously, because I don't see such concentration of these these cars in other countries except here yeah it's a nice day and life is good well exactly as i said you see that's the mosque which i was passing a while ago a moment ago and here behind the corner is not just another mosque, it's another two mosques. You see there is one minaret quite close to us, just across this square. And there is another one, two blocks or one block further. Yeah, I haven't seen this place, although it is quite near my house. <laughs> house. <laughs> And yeah, by the way, I got an upgrade in my hostel. I stayed for... I reserved for one night. And then I offered a deal to the owner. If he gives me a good deal, I will stay two weeks with him. And he did. <laughs> he gave me a separate room. Uh, not, ex not not immediately, I had to wait two more days, two more nights, stay in the same hostel place. But after two days, he was able to give me a separate room for two weeks, for a price which was just a little bit more. I forgot what was it, it was... Uh, it was some four euros something, I think, for the hostel, and now it is five euros something per night. So a good deal, and now I have a separate room. So life is good. <laughs> I can work, I can feel quite safe, because if things doesn't go smooth with money, I have plenty of ways how to survive here in this extremely cheap country where I can get a full meal for 28 cents <laughs> and get my belly full for 28 cents well almost full to be honest to get it completely full i probably would need a 50 cent maybe 50 cent meal <laughs> but it's hard to beat it what do you think it's so good life costs very little here and yeah weather is good 22 degrees now beginning of february it's just uh, what is it second day of february now and these amazing views how can you not be happy living in such a place This is another day and I'm again walking around the Swan and this time I'm admiring their building techniques and admiring I use in quote unquote admiring <laughs> like this house looks like it's a proper house doesn't it? A proper solid uh, masonry walls, doors, everything like it's supposed to be, right? Look again. <laughs> this is how they look when they're not finished yet. And yeah, if you think they have any foundations, <laughs> think again. They just lay the row of bricks on the sand. <laughs> That's it. Well, they don't have any organic matter here on the surface 
on the on the topsoil. Uh, you can see maybe here. You see? <laughs> There's no foundation. They just lay the bricks in the sand. So they don't have any organic matter in the topsoil. And they don't have any frost. So this kind of works. <laughs> and look how they build when they join the bricks. You can see through those walls. <laughs> they don't use any mortar in the vertical seams, just in the horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> and if you need to pass some wires, you just leave a gap in that place. You don't need anything more, no drilling, nothing. <laughs> just leave a gap where you lay those bricks in the sand. And I don't know what was here. They built it and there was some problem with permission, with building permit or something, and they had to destroy it, I don't know. But you see, there was the wall foundation. Zero foundation. <laughs> and and look how, uh, how, what do you call it? Uh, not straight line, <laughs> how they are building it. And now, let's wo look on that big proper house which looked like a proper house a moment ago. Let's look here. This is how it was made. <laughs> Does it look like a solid proper house to you now? <laughs> well, I like that they don't complicate things. <laughs> but this is kind of a little bit too far. <laughs> in my opinion, at least. I wouldn't want to buy this house and live in it. <laughs> okay. I just thought I have to show you this. Where else can you see such stuff? <laughs> uh, and I actually saw these kind of things selling for good money in advertisements. So these new developers, they develop places in this kind of manner and then they sell it for good money. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. But obviously there is somebody who wants to buy it. Otherwise they wouldn't be doing it, would they? Here again it's demolished. Newly built and already demolished. Yeah, who knows, maybe it was some problem with permits. Or whatever, I don't know. Crazy stuff. <laughs> and, and this is, yeah, this is the proper building. When they have the reinforced rebar, reinforced concrete pillars and floors and then they just fill the spaces with the blocks. In that case it doesn't matter <laughs> how you fill those spaces, they don't carry any load. But in that case it's a little bit different story. Right doggy? Oh you look very sick. Yeah doggy. So yeah, friends, I think it's time to go home. I still have a good amount of work to be done today. And I have been walking already for an hour or so. So let's go back. See you some other day, my friends. Yeah, and here is the same house uh, from higher above. I just climbed on this mountain. <clears throat> just for you to see that it is a real house. You see somebody is living there. Well, maybe it's not even polite to <laughs> to film like this. But yeah, that's a, that's a real house. That's not some I don't know. 
fake thing. That's really for living. Amazing. Well, this is a cool thing. Egypt Post. The mobile unit with ATM machine, you see. And the post office. I wonder what is it doing here in Aswan, in almost the center of the city. But I can imagine they're using these things in uh, rural areas where there is no, nobody and nothing around. Cool. So my dear friends, I am walking towards Aswan train station. I have checked out already from my hostel from my room and this if everything goes smooth these are my last minutes or hours in this city and probably it might be a good moment to try to make some conclusion what do we think about it I would be interested to hear what do you think about Aswan from what you saw or maybe you know you have been in Aswan you know that uh, these things even more than I do that would be good to hear that as well if you have some uh, valuable opinion about the things but regarding uh, to my thoughts can I walk here? I should um, what I think about this one in general I seriously, seriously like the climate, especially in winter. I don't know if I would be too happy to be here in summer. Probably not. <laughs> Every day, solidly more than 40 degrees temperature and crazy sunshine just above your head might be a bit difficult. I don't know. If you don't have a cool house, air-conditioned air or something like that where to stay during day it might be a torture uh, but in winter I would argue that it is perfect the climate is amazing it never rains it almost always is sunshine like this and it is warm it is like 22 degrees average during day during night it's colder of course it can be something like nine degrees at night but if you're not outside during night you don't care about it in house even you don't need any heating even they don't have any heating in houses no need because uh, the house still retains the heat from the day and you are okay to stay there overnight you don't get cold so that's that's one I idea which is really good another idea which is good here are prices which are really cheap like on average including eating out can I walk through here I think so yeah should be okay <laughs> the direction is correct the road is a little bit funny well, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, prices. On average, when I calculate all my... Okay, I know. We might get through there, maybe. Let's see. I saw these gates and already thought that, okay, we have to go back. But maybe not. Maybe we can go here. We'll see. We'll get some good views as well. So, on average, my food money, including that most days I am eating out one time a day, which is crazy. I have never done it in my life. <laughs> and now I do it solidly every day. 
and my average is something like a little bit less than three euros per day on food imagine that and that's when I, for I afford everything that I want completely liberally whatever I want I buy and then it is three euros per day crazy if I wanted well this is some area if I wanted that's crazy <laughs> and this is almost the center of us one but you never see this place because you, you never go here you go on the main road if I wanted I could easily live on one euro per day on food uh, if I think what I'm doing and if I'm careful and uh, act according to a plan so it is very good in that regard and the public transport is also 29 cent per ticket and so on so easy simple cheap good <laughs> and uh, you can find a place to rent for five euros a day or so that's cool we could potentially go there but then I would end up on the main road where I was yesterday already let's walk there maybe and see maybe we can continue along this road so that's the second thing Salam alaikum uh, climate is perfect and yeah I like that the, the, it's not it's dry it's not humid it is so good for my ankle and so good for everything to be honest clothes dry very quickly when you wash them you yourself dry very quickly after shower nothing is wet moist damp humid everything is pleasant so salam so uh, climate is perfect prices are very good uh, difficult to beat there are a couple countries in the world where you could get cheaper accommodation and cheaper food but not many and salam and those countries those couple countries would be quite far away from Europe and very expensive transport wise so Egypt is quite a good combination I would say it's very cheap and close uh, to fly here from Europe and climate is good the climate is much better than Mediterranean countries much better can't compare even okay we can continue our walk <laughs> nice <laughs> We're moving the right direction, even though I'm not sure if I will be able to get through these small roads. So, what else? People. People are very nice here. Uh, it is very safe. I don't see any dangers at all this far, in two months' time. And people are extremely friendly, helpful and yeah you definitely like you can never say that uh, any problems are impossible shukran uh, shukran lala shukran you see even here i was uh, telling you about it and the man who was coming out of his house he said welcome and can i help you and it was an honest question I could see from his face uh, it was he wasn't trying to sell anything or whatever he was just honestly willing to help if, if I would need any help Salam alaikum so yeah uh, you can never say that problems and crime is impossible but I would definitely argue that here it is much less likely than it would be in any major European city so nice 
that way as well. I definitely can recommend Egypt in that way. Uh, what are bad things? If you are offended by pavements like this, dirt and dust, uh, and general um, uh, poverty kind of situation. Salam alaikum. Uh -huh. That must be the beginning of market, I think. Okay, we are already quite close. I don't look on the map while I'm, uh, while I'm filming. So, <laughs> shukran, shukran, salam, salam. <laughs> ah, uh, I mean uh, Latvia, Europa. Europa? <laughs> Ma'am, You look like you Egyptian. Ah, Lele, shukran, shukran. <laughs> Okay, he was friendly, but he was also a seller. And I kind of need to judge these things and see when I want to reply because they are kind and I want to be kind in return. And when I ignore and keep walking because I'm not the person to buy things from him, no matter what it is. So, if you are offended by these kind of things, poverty in general, uh, the things are not shiny and clean, then of course you wouldn't like Egypt. Except for, of course, the tourist uh, areas, like the big resort, uh, closed gate situations in Hurghada or Sharm el Sheikh or places like that. Uh, that's a different world, of course. That's not Egypt. <laughs> that's part of Egypt, politically, but socially it's a different world. So yeah, that, then if you're offended by these things, uh, you wouldn't enjoy being here, probably. But I can assure you that even poverty uh, is not as difficult, disgusting, and troublesome as it is in developed countries because when there is poverty in for example in Ireland I can speak for sure I've lived there for 10 years so I'm, I, I know pretty much what I'm talking about in Ireland those people who live on social welfare it is lot 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 by miles more difficult and uh, volatile and mm, how do you say unpleasant situation both for them and for the people around them than it is here because this kind of poverty is healthy type of poverty it's they don't receive social welfare sitting at homes uh, they're working they do stuff they have their businesses they are, most of them, vast majority, are very responsible. Hello, hello, salam alaikum. <laughs> uh, so they're responsible, honest and nice people. Pleasant in communication. The only difference is that the numbers in terms of money which they receive are very small. But their expenses are equally small as well. So. I wouldn't say they are too, too different, while uh, developed country poverty, poverty which is in, in, the, in the pockets of uh, areas in developed countries, these places are really dangerous, difficult and, and troublesome. And I don't speak down on these people, I can understand how they feel and how yeah, how it is to be in that situation. But to be honest, I must admit that it is something which uh, I don't envy at all. And I prefer to be far further away from something like that. Here it's a lot better, a lot better. I can't compare it even. So just for those who, who would be maybe panicking when I talk about poverty and and uh, dirt and so on so yeah i'm I, I talked about 
15 times more than I thought I will talk <laughs> but you get my rough idea and in general all in all I can definitely definitely recommend this one and Egypt in general but especially south of Egypt climate wise like if you go to Alexandria for example or Port Said that will not be the same as here it will be Mediterranean climate which in winter is very windy rainy stormy unpleasant much better than north of Europe of course still that's why northern Europeans go to Portugal and Spain and so on in winter uh, or Italy or Greece or Cyprus but it's still bad compared to what's going on here where it where, where the weather is just a dream it's amazing you can't get any better than this as being in winter here and one more thing actually which I forgot to mention which I really like about Egypt in general but especially about Aswan is their attitude about races of people it's amazing uh, when I see how people live here I remember those words of Martin Luther King who said that he is dreaming about that day when his children will be living in a society where people is judged not by the color of their skin but by content of their character and here it is exactly what I see there are a lot of people here uh, from the Nubian descent and Sudanese as well whose ancestors are from Sudan and, uh, and a lot of people from other Middle Eastern places and you can see the mixes of all kinds of uh, skin colors here and nobody, nobody is worried about it they literally don't care about it it's no difference what what is different what kind of person you are what kind of actions do you take and what are your morals and so on but not your amount of pigment in your skin who cares about it and this is something which like I have always been thinking that it's a natural normal self-understandable thing to have but I still see that in so many other places in the world people are still judging people by the pigment in their skin which is kind of foolish I don't know like I don't want to ridicule anybody even racists but I can't understand them <laughs> like why why would you think that person is better or worse just because of the amount of pigment in his skin or her <laughs> what's the difference there and here you really see the society where nobody cares about your color of your skin you you have people with all kinds of skin colors around and everybody feels the same they're humans and they're treated like humans and at least, well, I just spent two weeks here, it's maybe too early to say, but I honestly didn't see any indication at all that this would ever be a problem here. Nothing. Maybe I just didn't see it. Let me know if you know something. But to me, it feels really as it should be. Nice, nice. I definitely recommend this place because of that as well yeah people so I definitely do <laughs> that's a place I definitely do recommend you friends uh, come here especially during winter I'm highly highly uh, suspicious how do I say that you won't regret it I can't imagine why would you it's so good Okay, my friends, I am already slowly approaching train station and I don't think I have anything else which I wanted to show you. Maybe I can show you how I depart with the train, but even that, you have seen it already.
so I probably I probably can just say you all the best to your friends <coughs> that's how you sell things <laughs> nice So friends, as you see, we are leaving S1 station and that is it for my S1 video and I'll see you in some other time, in some other city we'll see where at the moment I'm going to Luxor but I have some interesting plan for the next things which I'll be doing but we have to leave and see if it will go through <laughs> and if it does you'll know about it here all the best my friends